Yeah, I'm good. If you want, you, well, I don't know. You'll probably see chats coming up here. But, you know. tomorrow, I guess they okay. There's a microphone. I think we're, I think we're live on my channel. Hey, everybody. I'm, I'm live at NAM, And I'm here with Jamie. Yeah, we're, we're going. We're good. Is there a camera? Is that it there? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> this is really good. I feel like we need, like, a beach skate behind us. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I think we've been, it, it's so, I'm gonna Jamie and myself have been walking around, and it, it really kind of reminded me of uh, comedians in cars getting coffee. Like that show, yeah. We've done that I'm going to do that like, too. But we've really hit much more complicated topics, I feel. Yeah, <laughs> oh man. Like if, if Jerry Seinfeld and one of his yeah people were talking about philosophy. Something. I think we we did. That. We did well. I mean, we did it without the accompaniment of any kind of alcoholic beverage. It felt like we were doing it on that sort of pub level. Yeah. You know, in yeah. the best possible way. Really, yeah. Like, we just, it was just generally just kind of... And, like, most... And, yeah, and we also addressed, like, how crazy it is when you first meet someone. And you, you're definitely used to this with your podcast. Like, that first conversation you have with somebody or, like, when you're getting ready to record the podcast, it's always that first glimpse. Oh, always, like, yeah. And it's so interesting how sometimes it, that first glimpse is terrible, right? When you're like, uh, you know, when the person's just like not in the zone. But yeah, you, you immediately tell can tell when you just kind of like lose track of time in conversation. Yeah, which is so nice. Absolutely. And hey, this is a good place to lose track of time because <laughs> yes. you know definitely <laughs> we're all waiting for the 5 p.m. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> Get, getting waves. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, hi there. Aww. How are you? <laughs> Aww, I should come over, no? That's all right. Aww, yeah, that's really I'd cute. like to interview that chat. Oh, yeah. That's nice. So, uh, <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah, how long, how many episodes of your podcast have you done at this point? See, it's like 97 oh. now. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. That's, yeah. Well, I was about to ask, like, who is your favorite, who's some of your favorite guests, but that's a terrible question to ask because. You're going to drop the F word on me. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's terrible. No, no, but it, it, hey, I, I probably do have a few favorites, son. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, interviewing Susan Rogers was amazing for me, being such a big Prince fan. Yeah. And also Wendy Melvoin from Prince of Revolution. Yeah. And then there's like, you know, I really enjoyed speaking with uh, my last guest, Holly Herndon. Imogen Heap was great. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, Richard Devine was always great to speak to. It feel, he's a character. It yeah. feels like you, there's never enough time to speak to Richard. Do you know what I mean? Richard's an alien. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, like, yeah, I mean, like 2001 or something. Like, same, yeah. yeah. We're on tour in 2002. Mm -hmm. He was fixing, wasted. Richard was on the back of the bus repairing everyone's laptops. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It yeah. was very much, and everyone loved him. Not, not just because of that, yeah. but because he was just a... He's just on his own frequency, isn't he? Yeah, I think as I've like grown more into modular and as I've grown more in, they really get ten times more than we do. Absolutely. It's like, and it's insane. It sounds Absolutely. like such a woke thing to say, but like it's facts. It's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all my friends who you know, the are you know, it's so crazy. But yeah. Yeah, that's uh, you know, let's hope things move forward. I mean, they are. Yeah. No more gear sluts. Yeah, yeah, there you no go. <laughs> now you're right. We've, we've made some oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I guess so. With the podcast world, is that like, I guess, how do you get feedback from that? Do you have a. It's quite minimal. I mean, I give out my email address. It's liddellmakeswaves at gmail.com. That's liddellmakeswaves at gmail.com. I've even got a business card, Ben. No, but, you know, yeah. but so, yeah, I mean, that actually is a weird old school way it's almost like send me a postcard yeah essentially that's what happens i'll get these sort of like oftentimes it's really i got one today just before this show very heartfelt um yeah maybe uncomfortably personal to me mm. it's become like something that's relatively new for me but I, like i opened up about my dad recently and my relationship with him and the complications of it and this person wrote back saying it was really 
helpful to me. It feels really great to, you know, kinship, even if it's very remote. So I get that kind of thing, and then I get a lot of musical submissions because I ask for them. Right. And I, I actually really love that part of the pod because I loved John Peel growing up as a kid. And he would always feature me of kind of unsung people, really. Yeah. And I feel to send their stuff to me, and I can kind of pepper it through the show and, like, show a little spotlight on, on the people. It's not just the Jamie show with the Jamie music, and the, you know what I mean? It's funny because, you know, I was dealing with a little bit, like, to when I was just the flashbulb, and that's what I was doing for my full-time job. Yeah. I felt it's just, like, puking out my expression, my feelings, my artwork, and then other people are getting it, and I'm not really helping. And, and this, like, manifested itself into weird things. Like, I, I started a nonprofit music school in South Chicago for a while. I, you know, I just always try and be, like, making up for it. And then once YouTube happened, it kind of still felt the same. But once I started the Discord and, like, the Patreon and all that stuff, right. it's, like, a tight community, m many of whom are probably watching now. And it's, like, a super tight community and, like, seeing people That's great. talk about difficult issues in it like that makes me feel so good agreed no i'm not really doing that much to you know all i've done is just been like here's a discord but you know it's like yeah it's, but it's, they get a sense of who you are and what you stand for and feel yeah. like it's a safe place that you've created and that is worth a lot i mean you know and I, I think that happens sometimes in the conversations uh i mean i think when i started out the podcast I was really talking about the gear and how people really do stuff and and then like that's really like waned in terms of my interest with the show. Now yeah. I'm just much more interested in what makes people tick and how to get through difficult things. Yeah. You know, how to like stay excited, where's the passion? Like things that are like much more like at the heart of it for me. You know, there's sometimes really you can't just ask Dave Rossum about that. Even though I kind of wish I had a little more, I started to speak to him about his company and how he kept it going, and it was fascinating, you know. Yeah. Not just the products, not just the things like a NAM, you know. Sometimes it's a little bit exhausting to not get conversations that go beyond the thing, you know. Right. Yeah, it's always interesting to hear how people started doing what they did too, because a lot of times it does come from like these deep yeah. places of trauma in a lot of cases. Yeah. Like a lot of people, you know, like. I would say that like music for me was probably like a shelter, you know. And, yeah. And that's and that's how I got so selfish with it probably, and that's why I didn't collaborate as much just because it's always been uh, like, you know, if I'm stressed out, I'll go make music, and even if I don't record it, it's just you know. Yeah. And I assume a lot of musicians are like that. It's, yeah. One thing I wanted to talk to you about. You had uh, so. My, my history with you is really interesting because you were an IDM artist, obviously. Yeah. And uh, I, you, you did really high level. What were you using? Were you using uh, Super Collider? Or? Yeah. From time to time, yeah. Yeah, okay. And, and you were like this really high level IDM artist, and then pow, you, you, you have the voice of a songbird, and you are yeah. phenomenal. You have this energy, this funk. This like whole thing that just came out of nowhere, and uh, the person who first introduced me to that was uh, Charlie Cooper. He was just like, he was like, you heard Jamie Liddell? <laughs> you heard his shit? What? Yeah, you heard his stuff lately? And I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, the IDM guy. He's like, uh, uh, no, check this out. And I was just like, oh my god! Like it, it was like really. Mm. I remember him, nice. Charlie Cooper, and John, the Telephone Tel Aviv guys. Like we we're just in Chicago, just listening to your stuff. When you finally, it's almost like you came out as a singer. <laughs> You know? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, true. It's funny, like you just, you're just like I admit it. I have a great. Voice no, you know, yeah, it's very yeah. much kind of like that actually. Yeah. I started to tease my voice out in like electronic productions that I was making. I used to be in like a sort of a trio called yeah. Subhead, and it was techno. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, there wasn't much intelligence in it. It was more just DM. Yeah. Like it was, um, you know, the three of us were just bashing it out, old school style, at loving it, and. Uh, I'd tease my vocal in, but I'd be more just kind of going like, just like kind of like scatting, yeah. but without any lyrics and just being like a kind of a weird, almost like a sample of like a weird character, you right. know? And, uh, and that sort of gave me the confidence, I guess, to sort of like think about putting my voice on recordings more. Yeah. And then uh, it's when I worked with Christian Vogel when we had Super Collider. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
we were trying to make <laughs> I was in bands and I was doing all of that kind of stuff but yeah fusing it with the electronics was was quite a hurdle yeah but I, I think bet. after a while I just sort of yeah just sort of jumped in you know and sort of yeah <laughs> didn't look back I guess yeah and I mean well that's kind of like what you have to do too like you have to yeah. be brave and you have to like it, that, you know the conversation I've had quite a few times in like the last 48 hours has been if you ask like if I if I went on Twitter right now and I said okay fans of my music what do you want to hear next and almost every answer would be make another album like this one when like no one uh, actually wants that like they want you to make another album that they will someday want more of right because if you just give everybody what they want then you're not actually like blowing their minds you're just like you know as, as weird as it is to say like everybody has an imagination but like a, a musician they have an imagination that's very well trained in music and so therefore it's our job to ra you know raise the bar of like what we're possible with our you know with our voice or with yeah. our skill. Um, and you absolutely did that. You just like took a left turn, and everybody, and that's what worked so well for you. But right? I think, well, yeah, I think what was interesting. I was on Warp um, for 14 years, and I, I got signed from uh, by making this album on Spy Mania, yeah, which is like the label that Squarepusher kind of yeah, released on, and all yeah. that. Uh, and they were friends of mine in, in Brighton, and I and I got asked by them if I was, you know, able to make a record for them, and I was like, oh yeah, amazing, right. Uh, and I think what happened was I was really trying to sort of compete, you know, right. with this sort of faster, harder, louder kind of thing yeah. of the sort of drum and bass turning into drill and bass. And it was really like everyone doing the more crazy programming, the more esoteric stuff. Yep. And it's sort of like after a while, it hit a point with me where I was just like, I tapped out a little bit and I was like, yeah, I need a, I need a song. Yeah. I need to actually hear from my soul. I, I can't hear this anymore. I like it just sort of like lost its um, joy. It's like it just it's as if the, the petals wilted and and I was just like, oh, it's not yeah. doing it for me anymore. And like the love went and I, I, I needed to rediscover music in a way, rediscover what I liked about things in my past. Oh, and it's our, it's our friends. <laughs> um, they <laughs> your friend <laughs> yeah. a fan of your outfit yeah. <laughs> the, the Yamaha people really <laughs> like funny. My that, that was really good um, yeah yeah thanks <laughs> uh, yeah they um, <laughs> yeah but uh, going back to that it, it's interesting because like I, I think I did the same thing my, my big transition was like 2007 when I was just mm -hmm. like okay now you have acoustic orchestral like like and it was right. it was like I was competing with Square Pusher and Apex. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, and uh, and I did I had a conversation with Warp, but yeah, you know, I had many conversations with Warp at that period and people thought I, I had thought I lost my mind because I was like, No, because I don't want to be under Apex's umbrella. Because I feel like I'll always oh, be there. Yeah, like I'll right. never you know, like like you're one of the IDM guys then and yeah. you're sort of there and and I guess now looking back at like 2022, it's like, oh, thank God. Like I, I was able to go all these directions and, you know, not have, you know, essentially I just eventually didn't have a record label at all. And it was just, you know, once, once CDs weren't really, you know. You were ahead of the curve, years, you know. Maybe, I don't know. You know, it's, I, I took a pet. I, I took yeah. a very, very, because like Warp was like my dream label my whole life. And Same, then, yeah. And then once I had that opportunity, I don't know, maybe it was that, I have no idea. I was just like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like this. Another thing, though, is I feel like a lot of those labels in the UK kind of didn't like Americans. Like, I felt like there was a lot of like nationalism behind it, and I was like, I'm I never gonna get promoted like Square Pusher. <laughs> you know, I'm never gonna get like that same level of respect, uh, and so therefore, I should probably just. I mean, you know, I think that might be true. Yeah, and and it, I don't think it's like intentional. But I, I, I think it's more, it would be more obvious with Reflex, probably, than, than Warp. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, you always saw like Jimmy Edgar not getting as much, Jimmy Edgar and Richard Devine not getting as much, uh, I yes. guess, 
phrase as as you know the their British counterparts or something. Yeah, I never really so. thought about that, but yeah. Well, I will I will say I remember touring with with all those guys in 2002. Yeah. We're talking about Richard on the bus, right? right? And we were out there with Mark Bell was there, Nightmares on Wax, Plaid, Richard, like a few other acts. And basically it was interesting on the bus, the divide between the Americans and the English. Yeah. It, we basically occupy separate parts of the bus with separate humor. Right. And neither camp would really laugh at one another's jokes. Huh. You know, it was quite an interesting kind of, it wasn't like animosity, right. it was just a sort of a strange sort of like incompatibility. And it's the first time I'd really become aware of that. And I'm not sure if it still exists, but there is that divide in humor. And I, I don't know, it's a, maybe it's a scrappy island thing from the English. Like, you know, who knows? Also, if you tell somebody about like, uh, oh, what is it? Rhy rhyming slang. slang. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you tell somebody about that, they're just like, what? Like in America, it just makes no sense how that could be a campy thing. What's nice is, say you get like um, a cab would be a sherbet dab, right? Yeah. But then you like even you dip, you ditch the dab part and you just say sherbet. Right. Yeah. So that really requires internal knowledge. Like, are you gonna get sherbet? Yeah. Or like, like the yeah, if you if you were to say stairs, you would say apples. Apples and pears. Oh yeah. yeah. Stairs, apples and pears, and then you cut out the pears and apples, and it's like, what are you doing? Uh. <laughs> you know, it's just like, why do you? I mean, yeah, you know, it's a code. Ocean's Eleven. That I think that was the first time I ever heard. Of, like I was like, <laughs> I think I like Googled one in Ocean's Eleven. I think Don Cheadle played a a London, you know, South End London guy or something, and, uh, and right. said, "Oh, we're in, <laughs> we're in Deep Tharney," and they're like, then everybody looked at him and he was like, "Tharney rubble." And everybody's like, "What?" He's like, "Trouble," and they're like, "What?" You know, and it's but I think it's the first time I've ever heard it like addressed in like a mainstream Hollywood movie or something like that. Yeah. It's yeah, I mean that it's still like it's a cool thing. It's it's like one of those one of those things that you look back on. I, uh, another one of those things is professional wrestling. I don't watch it, but I feel like in a hundred years we'll be like, wow, we had this whole fake like fighting thing that like children loved and like it was just this massive culture that we had, yeah. you know. It's like one of those things that's beautiful after it ends, but when it's going on you're just like, Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, now I'm picturing all of the English and American artists thrown in the ring together. Yeah. That's really how they ought to have worked it out. And you've gone, you've gone through the gauntlet moving here. So yeah. Before you moved to Nashville, did you li you lived in the states elsewhere? A uh, brief stint in New York for two years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's crazy. Yeah, UK to Nashville is a pretty. Well, I was in Berlin before for eight years. Okay. Right. So I went UK to Berlin and then like New York, Nashville. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I guess you. Yeah, did you? You know, do you still like look for the the Heinz beans and the the blue? Ah, the there's blue Marmite. Can. There's Marmite, which yeah. our son is really into. Like he'll have a Marmite sandwich really? in his lunch every day. Oh. And, uh, you know, he, he likes to say that he's English as a sort of point of pride. Yeah. Even though he's never been to England. But, you know, he has some of my accent and, you know, he's sort of caught in the middle. Like, the, a word like water is a very complicated <laughs> word for him. Yeah. And he's kind of adopted his own pronunciation. It's more like Wardor. Mm. Yeah. It's turned into, like, almost like a kind of Tolkien character, Wardor. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, so he exists in some sort of middle space in that bus. Yeah. But, so, you know, between the Americans and the English, he's, uh, he's sort of in the middle. So uh, that's, I never thought that would happen, but um, here I am, you know. That's great. And, yeah, I've been outside England for 23 years, almost half my life, yeah, yeah, which is peculiar. And when I go back to England sometimes, I'll get in a cab. I'll get in a shirt, but, you know, yeah. and I'll be like... Um, getting chatting with the with a cab driver and they'll be like oh where are you from mate and i'll be like well i'm english and they're like nah yeah they'll actually just say to my face like no i don't believe it wow and i'll be like but yeah but i am english they're like nah not with an accent like that man. huh you must be either you know, australian or like yeah you know they usually think i'm australian wow so my voice is somewhere lost in the atlantic yeah it kind of like, you know, it's sort of like, an, 
Anyway. Huh. That's, yeah, that's, it's, <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess, it, I know, I felt like when going to England, I felt like going to Holland was less of a culture clash. Like, like there is definitely a culture clash between, you know, I, you, people in America huh. I think think a lot like, oh, well, they speak English, so I'll be fine. What about like, Ireland? Germany's like, uh, Ireland, I've only been to Ireland briefly, and it was, um, I don't know, I, I, I was surprised by how small Dublin was. When I went, I, for some reason, I imagined Dublin. Dublin, massive. small. Yeah, Dublin, <laughs> small. Uh, Summarizing Europe. I really just wanted to go around. Like I wanted. Yeah. To, I wanted to go up into the middle of nowhere, but I didn't yeah. get a chance to. But. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. So, are you still touring? Uh, last tour I did was 2017. Okay. So I can give a yes, but it's in a very small font. Right. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm conceiving a potential show that m might not necessarily be as easy to tour in a widespread sense. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I've definitely I, I made a conscious effort uh, at, when I became a dad to not tour. Yeah. Basically, because uh, yeah. I didn't want to miss out on that time. I didn't want to be gone six months out of the year when my kid was just, you know, an infant. That's fair. Yeah. That's totally fair. Yeah. I mean, it's, I feel bad enough with the dog. It's just like, oh, man, <laughs> so well, especially like the long tours. Like, yeah. God, like they, back in the day, you know, you used no, to no, like right. three months and it's like, you'd forget where home was. You'd really like kind of, kind of lose your ground. Even on this trip. I mean, I'm, I'm out for 20 20 days or something, it's, but still, it's it's odd to be away from home. What back. happens to the behavior on your return? Is there like a bit of criticism of you from the dog? I, I always, because when I go on a trip, I'm usually driving or taking a boat somewhere, doing something really kind of, I'm not like flying and, you know, doing, doing. I, I'm seeing crazy things and like crazy yeah. places. So there's always a bit of a, why do I live here? Like, you know, ah. I saw something crazy, and I have this, like, beautiful picture in my head of where I just was. And I forgot that, like, you know, where I just was doesn't have a Walmart or Target anywhere near it, and I wouldn't be able to get batteries if I needed, you know, and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, so I feel like I do often have a, I want to move, where should I, for, like, a day or two. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. And, you know, the reason I live where I live, there isn't a good reason. I think the only reason is just because I don't really know of a better option at the moment. You know? Yeah, I mean, don't you find, as you travel around the world, yeah. you're like, it happened to me the other day staying in L.A. I, I walked outside with my breakfast, Yeah. found a beautiful place to have my breakfast, and I was like, oh, L.A., it's so beautiful. I yeah. mean, wow, look at me. I'm just having my breakfast. The climate couldn't be more yeah. wonderful. And then, you know, you get in a car and you're sort of looking at all the dirt on the street and the vibes and the, all the homelessness and the crazy, like, competitive rat race capitalist mayhem, like, yeah. implosion reality. And, like, and yeah. you're just like, ah, like, get me the hell out of this place. Right. It's an absolute hellhole. And then you sit back in the garden and it's an amazing temperature and you've got a margarita. You're like, that's absolute paradise. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's both. It's funny and every place you go, basically, ticks different parts of the where do you want to live and why box. Yeah. You know, climate box, the, you know, fun stuff to do box, you know. Is it boring? Maybe that's a box you want ticked. Yeah. yeah. At this stage in life, I quite like ticking the boring box because, you know, if your place is too hectic, you might not get anything done because you're always like, hey, come out, Ben, on the Monday. So, yeah. mate, you know, you just got distractions galore. Yeah. And then you, you might not actually get all of these great videos done because you'll just be, like, spread really thin. So it's like you mm. kind of, sometimes I find that a place that is on paper relatively dull can actually be really conducive to, like, peace. Right, yeah. Yeah, and I, I was thinking... That, peace like, is dull. Yeah. <laughs> Meditation on the surface is quite dull, isn't it? You just sit there doing nothing. I mean, what could be more dull? It's, and yet... It's funny where people, when people talk about, like, being in a relationship and they're, they're bored with their marriage or their relationship, when it's like, no, that's good. Like, no, not knowing if, you're, if your partner is going to be there the next day is not good. That's exciting, but it's not good. Like, oh, I see what you mean. Relationship is like, yeah, like... 
go get a puzzle. You know, <laughs> you'll be great. Yeah. Get a puzzle together. That's how you want to live your life. That's but you I'm seem like a man who's never bored. No, I'm never bored. I, I and what's your bored. secret? Uh, I mean, I want to be bored. I literally <laughs> I just <laughs> a trip to like sit on beaches, and I still do, couldn't find myself being bored. Like I can't, I can't do it. I can't stop. Is it because, yeah, like say I, I was reading a book last night and it was like comparing sort of Buddhism and their desire for solitude yeah. against like the, you know, the prison system where solitary confinement is the worst punishment. Yeah. So on the one hand, some people actively seek solitary confinement, whereas others were like, that's a hell. Uh, I, when I'm hearing you talk, is it because you have a restless mind and, uh, and like, and that you kind of are like a shark that you always need to be moving. Maybe I, well, what, one interesting thing is like I've, uh, that when I was 18, I, I was like arrested for something. I, I was in a car with somebody that friend did and I spent some time in, in jail. And oh. they, uh, yeah, sorry YouTube. Um, no, I mean, I think it's, it's pretty widely known, but I spent, I spent a little bit of time in jail waiting trial and a lot of people did a lot of things to try and get solitary. Like, like, solitary was like, yeah, people wanted it generally. Oh. And, and the guards would be like, you're not getting solitary, I know what you're doing. You know? They'd arrested a lot of Buddhists. Yeah, well, like, yeah, right. But in this case, like, the Buddhists would, like, you know, go to the bathroom on the floor in front of the guard or something. Or, you know, something ah, like yeah, it reminds like, me of the, uh, what's his name, Diogenes, <laughs> the Greek guy who would, like, masturbate in public. So sort of like shock tactics of like, yeah. why are we all so uptight? Yeah. What's wrong with me having a crap on the floor? Yeah. But you know, the, the goal was that, you know, while they wanted the punishment of being, of having alone time. Um, right, I suppose, yeah. You know, if you're that close to fecal matter, you might just want it for, yeah. for your own, you know. But I, I, yeah, I, I have a friend who uh, recently had like a brush with the law and said that like being in a cell by himself was like, the worst thing he's ever experienced, yeah. which is crazy, because I'd be fine. Like, you I'd, would? Yeah, 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 I'd be okay. So let's imagine that you're in that solitary confinement, yeah? Yeah. Like, what do you, where do you think your mind would go? Yeah, that's, I mean, I guess I, when I drive by myself, a lot uh, of yeah. times I'm in that state a little bit, and uh, there are times where I'll like drive a long distance by myself and never listen to music or any audio wow. the entire time. Wow. Uh, I think maybe just because my ears are tired because I work in audio, you know, so a lot of times. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think not being able to take notes, I would hope I'd have, like, a notebook. If I had a notebook, I think I'd be better because I'd be able to actually be like, okay, here's an idea. How could we sort this out? Um, but, you know, I not see. having... I'm not one of those, like, anti-phone people, but if you remember when we were kids, somebody would be like, well, what's bigger, uh, you know... London or Tokyo, and then you'd have to like sort it out. You'd be like, "Well, I remember seeing this picture of Tokyo, and you know, and it's like, well, no, but then there's a mountain near it, so it's probably near the suburbs don't go as far as they go in London, and you'd have to like hash it out and have this long conversation. <laughs> right. And if it really bothered you, you'd go to the library and figure it out. Or get all you mean speculative things. ramblings? Yeah, but what you're doing is problem solving, and like. And, but we Are you really problem solving when you're just speculating about the size of cities? But you're practicing it probably, right? You know. <laughs> I think it's but, more just kind of like passing the time with some guesswork. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that could be a way to problem solve. Yeah. Uh, but I, but I know what you mean. You sort of with less sort of ways to sort of get the answer. Yeah. Without any struggle. And and a lot of and with most things, uh, in the world. That we look for binary answers, but we have spectrums, and that's like, like especially in science, we look for one or zero, and we have an infinite spectrum between the two, unless it's something very, very specific. Like, uh, like there's a couple instances I can think of, like, uh, are you pregnant? You know, like that is about as close to binary as you could get. But like, you could even say, like, what's? You could even still have that Tokyo. If I told you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'd. Uh, I'd buy you some flowers <laughs> or something. Like that. Um, I mean, you know, there's yeah. pregnant pauses too. Yeah. But I mean, you know, yeah, I know what you mean. It, yeah, yes. but it's, it's okay. So I know what you mean. Yeah, it's. Uh, 
but but there's like so many things that are ungoogleable still. Yes. And like it's funny like when when an audio company sends me something and I want to know how to do something and then I look for the manual and then I'm like, oh yeah, it's not out yet. I don't have a manual. Now I have to figure it out my own way. And I, I kind of like that. It's frustrating for a minute, but I really do. Yeah, enjoy it. you're sort of plonked onto a mysterious island with no map, and you yeah. have to, yeah. you know, yeah, find the points of interest and uh, refuge and maybe get into some trouble along the way. But that brings us right back to, like, literally, I think the first thing we talked about. Yeah. Like, well, literally, we, like, met, we said hi, amazing that we ran into each other without having to find each other, and then, uh, yeah. is reality real? <laughs> like, it just kind well, of... Well, that was quite, yeah, that was quite a jump, wasn't like, it? Yeah. It was immediately I... went into, like, a, a blur of philosophy and particle physics. Yeah, yeah no, we, I, I appreciated that. Yeah. I mean, hey, I live for those conversations, really. Yeah. And I, I think, yeah, we we didn't, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to go down them particularly, uh, you know, for any length of time, but, and I never really asked you your perspective on consciousness, yeah. but do you think it's a byproduct of brain activity? Um, yeah, is it a byproduct of brain activity or, or are we actual oh, so, yeah. meat? I must admit, when you first, when I asked you that, you said no quickly. Yeah. And I actually, it took me by surprise. Yeah. I don't know. I had you down as a bit of a, uh, as a bit of one of those. I suppose. Yeah, I guess like, it, and how do you define that? Like, is there's the P zombie thing? I don't know if you're familiar with the philosophical zombies. Where like every single person here um, is just, and uh, <laughs> they're they're not conscious. They're just autonomous, walking things that don't realize that they're alive. Uh, and it could all exist in my head, or it I could see. exist as part of the system. And this is like you know that's like there is a. I didn't invent the pea zombie term. There is a, a thing, um, but you know, it, is that paranoia like zombie? Yeah, paranoid zombie. I it's think that's zombie. sort of like the more the ramblings of someone who's uh, either done. Yeah, well, I think it, I think it, it's like <laughs> the exponent of are you are you the only conscious thing in the universe? But just it's kind of what kind of what you talked ask me in a weird yes. way. Like like is con is your consciousness only in your brain and therefore everything else? Like, Not only on your brain. I suppose what my question was is, do you think that it arises hmm. strictly as a result of brain activity? Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So it, it ceases to be... What do you think about sleep? Sleep is... So, like, I... It, I guess if we get to like the roots of my belief system, I don't understand how we could stop, how we could die. And, and if you think about like how, you know, it, everything from the outskirts of where Schrodinger's law points to and things like that, every single time that we die, you would experience me dying, but uh, like your consciousness would experience me dying, but I would because, yes, you know, I see what you mean. Suicide, right? And so, uh, how do we die? And, and do, do things get really strange when we get around 150 years old and everybody else is dead? Or is there like one event that actually ends our consciousness and everything else in between that? Um, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, it might be impossible to commit suicide consciously, right? Because how would you actually end your consciousness if you can always branch off, if you exist in a superposition, and if you could always branch off into a new universe, right? Right, and it does seem to me, well, I, th I feel like you're making a fair few assumptions about using the word you, when you would just, you know what I mean? I think the crux of it comes down to that word there. The idea of identity, the idea of the self as opposed to the other. Yeah. Back to your binary distinctions, I suppose, self and yeah, other. Absolutely. There's a binary for you. Yeah. If that's not really the truth of things, and the self is merely a construct, as the Buddhists often like to suggest, then with the ego gone, what are we then? I think a lot of people who in the early rave culture first took MDMA, mm -hmm. experienced uh, a love. Ego death. Yes, yeah. that they were very concerned about the other person's feelings. They were very much in love with the other person. Yeah. You know, and it was almost like, it was rather than discovering that, it was more like just revealing the nature of things yeah. 
and, and like I, I found that really exciting and just I just thought to myself oh and I, have you ever heard of a stroke of insight that book when like a neuroscientist basically had a stroke yes, yes. and was aware of the process of the stroke happening right, yeah. and lost one side of the brain's functioning and like was much more aware of the other side of the brain was unable to make a phone call to call the emergency services because one part of the brain had stopped being accessible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but consciousness was still there, but there was a feeling of a bit like the mystics, like Meister Eckhart and all the Sufi mystics and all of these people who seem to agree with one another, at least in some large part, that there is a kind of a unity at some level. Yeah. There is no end. There is like a everything connected and like it, she had that feeling I seem to recall of feeling like she was dissolving into the oneness and it was actually a wow. beautiful sensation and it was a freeing sensation and I, I kind of I, I, I just feel like it's fascinating all that stuff I mean I, I don't I don't advocate you know I, I don't advocate anybody to use drugs or anything like that but I have I've tried to kill my ego a lot like you know I've, I've the, the one <laughs> the one thing that I've not that that I've I've yet to try is the five meo DMT the toad stuff which is like the most powerful hallucination. You lick a toad. It's it's a, a, a secretion from a toad. Um, Would it help? Could you lick a toad and it work? Um, if they were secreting it. <laughs> I think you might get really. I think you might. Do, get is really it their sick. tears? It's <laughs> no. I think it's the, them telling you to fuck off. Like when you pick them. Up oh, it's that. But, uh, you upset them, then lick it. Yeah, it is. It is poison um, or venom. But you uh, you smoke it, and then you let it dry out, and then you smoke it, and and it's the most powerful hallucinogen. And apparently, it's like the only one that guarantees ego death. Whereas, like forever. Hey, I've done. No, no, no. Uh, for like, <laughs> that'd be amazing. Though. Yeah. Like, what a great life. <laughs> no. Um, ego suicide. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess so. Maybe yeah. that's how you die. Yeah. And it's funny that we got here because you asked me what I think about sleep. And, <laughs> and, and sleep is like, sleep, in my opinion, is the yeah. ultimate contradiction to that. Like, yeah. I understand how we could die, but how am I going to sleep every night? Is it? Oh, I, that's what I think day. sometimes, yeah. Yes. But Clint, that's why I'm concerned about the word consciousness, because you're, is it that you lose consciousness, or is it that you enter another realm of consciousness? Right, yeah. Where you're just not aware in the same way. You know, what, what, what's your take on dreams? Um, I mean, I've, I've done a lot of lucid dreaming. I used to practice that a lot. Uh, and I guess to, you know, one of the more interesting things I've done, I think, with... Hang on, was, did I sense the word overrated? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, Dublin, small, yeah. lucid dreams, overrated. Yeah. No, but that, yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, I think I have, in, in lucid dreams, uh, you know, immediately, I don't know if you've ever had one, but immediately I have, like, yeah. you can do whatever you want. I did the same thing. I yeah. tried to study it. and yeah. um, uh, You can do whatever you want. And then at some point, I was like, well, I want to I wanna see what's behind the doors. Like, I, And so I would take a train and talk to people on the train. And knowing in the lucid dream that those people existed in my head and that I was talking to characters of my own consciousness. Which I suppose lends a bit of weight to the, the P-Zombies idea, really. Right, exactly. You were really in a P-Zombie kind of world at that point. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, however, like, one problem with lucid dreaming is that you never feel like you slept well, or at least I don't. I never, like, woke up after that and been like, oh, wow, I had a good night's sleep. I'd always be so tired and destroyed the next day. Cause, just because, I don't know, I, I don't, it's like, you you need to not be conscious to recover or something. Yeah. That, like, part of your consciousness. Um, but I was always fascinated by the idea, the potential idea, yeah. How about this? You must have done this, too. Surfing down, right? You know when you're going to sleep and you're, like, really trying to slow oh it down? God, I love that. I, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. I think it was called the hypnopompic state, I think. Yep. When you transition mm -hmm. from awake to unconscious, I suppose. Yeah. And so I, I can't... In, but I tell you what, that gives me the fear, though. You know, because you know, because the body paralyzes you, right? Yeah. Before you sleep, it paralyzes you, so you don't enact your Have dreams. You had sleep paralysis. Yes. Oh yeah, same. Sleep paralysis, bro. That is something <laughs> else, is it yeah. not? It's, when you wake up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
people who haven't had that, this you feel like a bit of a crazy person, but you're like, it hasn't happened to me thankfully in a long time. I didn't enjoy it. Did yeah. you enjoy it? No, no. Uh, I had, I had one. Like it's funny. Like this is like probably like the the creepiest story I have, and it's like you know it's still all no, nothing's like paranormal in it, but um, there was this owl that was dying outside my house, and it was like a baby owl. This is true. It was really happening. This is, yeah, yeah. And uh, and it, it wasn't a pea it zombie owl. Yeah, no, yeah. I would see it everywhere though, and I mean, I'll show you photos after this because you won't believe it. It's insane. Like it looked so evil, and it was rotting. Like it was straight up, like had bad owls. And yeah, it just had flies oh. like, on it and stuff. And, and you know, and I was initially I was debating, like, should I shoot it? But you can, legally can't. Like you can't kill <laughs> birds of prey. Like it's a federal offense. I like you're taking notes in the morning. You know, do the laundry. Shoot the owl? Question mark. <laughs> right. and sort shoot of like, evil rotting owl. Yeah, shoot like evil owl. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I, I should. It, it's, <laughs> it's literally out of a horror movie. It's like yeah. really scary stuff. And right around then, <laughs> I kept having. Uh, I, I remember I, I was in that state, and I remember like kind of waking oh. up in the middle of the night and thinking that like the owl was in the tree, or the owl was like out in the yard by a tree in my yard, and then it would like turn into a person. And then get closer, and that was right outside my window. And then, like, wow. I got in, and that was at the end of my bed. And then, like, I couldn't breathe. And then I'd be like awake, and I couldn't breathe. And I'd see this. Did you actually see a figure? That, yeah, yeah, that came from the owl. This like silhouette standing at the end of my bed. And then it eventually like go away. But it was funny because I remember telling my mom about it. And that she is truly awful. Just like I looked at my phone like an hour after the conversation with my mom, and she said, "I hope you never dream again." <laughs> It's just like, what a funny thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, Thanks, uh, Mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, and it, it, I swear, every time I tell that story, people are just, they, they, I have to show them the picture because I guess I'll post it. No, I, I'm part. fully with you. Yeah. But I, oh, hang on a minute, though. About the figure. Yeah. Are there any details about the figure? Black silhouette, tall, long arms and legs, like longer than oh, human. No. In some oh, cases. Yeah. oh. Um, and I've seen that figure. It's like the sleep paralysis figure that we all see. Do you see what? Do you see this? No, I, I've not seen the figure. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. it's, it's kind of common. I, I had the high pitch ringing, in, uh, like in my ears. Yeah. And I felt more just kind of like a, a presence. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, like a, 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 a sort of a presence. But it's been a long time, I'll be honest, it's been a long time that I haven't yeah. had that. Yeah, this is like, this is the last spout of it that I've had. I would usually get it where it'd be like a week, uh, where, you know, three days in a week. I now, think. am I right in thinking that the reason it happens is because the sleep sequence is in the wrong order? You're supposed to lose the paralysis of sleep yeah. first before regaining consciousness. But why is it horrifying? I, I, like, right. That's the thing, right? Like, why is it? It's it's probably the most scared I've been. It's it's like, because you literally are paralyzed. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But, but the, like, why are there presences and figures? Like, that's like the thing. You know, the, being paralyzed is bad enough. But like, why why do we feel some evil present? And this is like, I feel like most people that have sleep paralysis. It's feel never evil good. Presence. It's yeah. never good. Yeah. I've never had it and gone. Nah. Yeah, right? <laughs> I like, suppose maybe it's because it's a truly horrendous sensation yeah yeah it really it's just is. there's a really terrifying thought to be conscious and actually yeah like nausea everywhere. i seem to remember i don't know what the context of this was but uh, it was about consciousness and someone being asked basically they were in an operating situation they're about to operate in the guy's liver and they were checking for consciousness and the guy wanted to say something but in a similar manner could not but they proceeded with the operation because they had no response back from the patient, assuming yeah. that they were out, but they were not out. Huh. So it's like, or oh, then there's the locked in syndrome. You remember locked in? Have you heard of that? But you can't, you're conscious, but you can't, you're locked in. And oh. one, you could communicate, one guy did it. It's the diving bell and the butterfly is the name of the movie. Like, amazing had, film. I've and you can that. only communicate with blinking. And like it could make a Morse code, and you really everything goes, but you could you could just move a bit of your face. Huh. Terrible. No, I've, I've absolutely had that to me terrible. At a poker game. <laughs> what? Yeah, because I, I I was prescribed a low dose like benzodiazepine, uh, like clonopin, 
and I and I just it was the first time I ever had a glass of wine with it. And I remember being at the poker table, just like, and I could not move anything. But I was in heaven. I loved it. I loved Ultimate it. poker just, face. <laughs> yeah. You're like this shit is a yeah. winner. Yeah, if I, only I had consciousness to go with this. Yeah, right. But I remember hearing people being like, you know, Ben's really messed up. Like, uh, <laughs> he's really drunk. But I just remember being like, I feel like I'm in the best spa ever for a good five minutes. And I just couldn't move. But, yeah, it wasn't horrible. Oh, yeah. so there you go. Not all paralysis is bad. Yeah, yeah, that was that was nice. Like, because, I mean, well, also, like, you know, the, the GABA receptors in my brain were literally muted from the clonopin from feeling any sort of fear. Are you familiar with the guy, I think his name is Daniel Tammet. No. He recited Pi to I think 22,000 places. It took him five hours. Huh. He's like a, a, a special kind of savant who had an epileptic episode when he was young. Yeah. And it's allowed, well I think they speculated that what happened was his brain was rewired so that he kind of sees numbers a bit like synesthesia, but he, he has a he can do incredible calculations. Oh, okay. I think I've seen him on like. Talk yes, shows right, right. He yeah. was. He yeah. became a bit of a kind of a, yeah. you know, he got paraded around in yeah. a way, which it, but he's very rare because most people in that state we see like more like Rain Man or something. Mm -hmm. They're like quite dysfunctional in a way. He's quite regular, quote unquote, almost like um, neurotypical in a lot of ways. Wow. But he can. He, but the way he describes seeing numbers is like they emerge as kind of auras in a kind of field, and they all have a distinct energy. Like a one has a certain thing. And when he went to Manhattan, he's like, I didn't like Manhattan. It was full of nines. Like everything looked like a nine to him. And he says a nine could be an intimidating thing. Interesting. I mean, you know, just the, the, the way, I mean, the way, it's like, it, is the brain just like a simple rewire like that? Yeah. It, gives well, you access to another universe yeah, of potential. You, you think, like, and could you, could you make that happen, you know, if like neural feedback Circuit bending is, gets, well, yeah, well, of the brain. Neural feedback is, right? And I don't so, know what neural feedback is. So neural feedback is, uh, I, I've done it on myself, uh, basically, you... The hardest part is finding your baseline from an EEG. You find your baseline like when you're focused, when you're not anxious, when when you're in, okay. in your uh, and you know I I don't even want to say like the combination of alpha or beta waves that it is for me um, just because I feel like a lot of people want to try neurofeedback and they want to like jump the gun and and try and like the baseline part is the most important and and I said that in my video repeatedly and I still stick by that. Um, but what you could do, uh, so I made a, I wrote a script, and uh, I'm a, I'm a MMA fan. Like I watch UFC, MMA, boxing, things like that. And one thing that drives me crazy is when the stream stops because I pay money for it, and I'm usually pretty angry. And so, uh, and then one thing that makes me feel better is when it comes back and I get to resume the fight. So I had an EEG, and every time that I left my baseline and got anxious or unfocused, the stream would stop while I was watching the fight. And then I'd have to bring it back down, and then it would stop. Ah. And then I'd get a little dopamine reward from that. And what that does is it creates stronger, I guess, neuronal connections to, to between dopamine and being focused. And so after that, it got like a little bit more... Uh, I was like, okay, well, this probably isn't going to be that effective. I should have it work with a video game. So I got, like, a Super Nintendo emulator, and I tried it with, like, Mario games and things like that, which are more stressful to play, and ah. therefore they bring you out of your baseline. And so you have to learn how to stay in your baseline, because if you're, if you're Mario and you're jumping and your game pauses or freezes and you have to go back down, then you're probably going to die. You're not going to be able to finish the jump because, you know, you're interrupting the game. So it would get, like, more ah. and more... Uh, it would get more and more aggravating, uh, you know, and it would be harder to do. And then finally, my, like, final way of dealing with that was, or, or sorting through that was atonal sound that turns into music when you hit your bass line. And Ooh. so you can just play music with your thoughts. Yeah. And so wow. uh, that's neurofeedback. Uh, the, I, I see. I think so I'm the first person to do it with music, but there are, like, neurofeedback centers you could go to. And, uh, I mean, it's been, like... That's great. Right. To not only help with anxiety and focus, and things, yeah, but, uh, 
actually migraines, epilepsy. It's a bit like guided meditation in a way, yeah. isn't it? It's like the hacked way of doing things. Yeah, it's, like yeah, it's, it's a bit like... Yeah, circuit magic. It's, it's basically mindfulness. Yeah, it, yeah. It's totally. sort of like just saying, like, you are in control of your baseline. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you can you can influence your baseline. Yeah. You can... You can, hey, I suppose first of all, it's like, I love my baseline. Yeah. And it's a good place to be. Can I maintain my baseline as long as possible? Yeah. Through my life? Because I always think they're like a virtuoso player. They all have one thing in common. It's like they seem relaxed right. and flowing. They don't seem like anxious and like tense. They feel like they've worked out how to do incredibly fast runs with a fluidity nice and, a, and an ease. It reminds me of the baseline. I'm sure if you looked at their thing, they wouldn't be like, ah, Christ, right. man off, no. They'll just be like, ooh, you know, just it, like. Same, but it, it's kind of interesting because it's the exact same thing with boxing. With like, when you think right. of Muhammad Ali, you're not thinking of somebody who's like, I'm gonna go out there, you thinking of somebody who's just flowing. It's just like, Seeing, seeing the shots before they come and, and dodging them and, and countering them. Except for the Tyson fight where he kind of yeah. lost his control and oh, with yeah. the ear biting thing. I think, wasn't it because Holyfield reminded him of his dad? I, I don't know if there was any, like, I mean, I, I heard he also blamed Zoloft. And, you know, there's a lot of weird things. I mean, I, I think Tyson it, was just in a really bad place in general. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, because I love weird. watching Tyson fights, though. Oh my God! Especially I love really watching Tyson career. fights. Yeah, brilliant. I'm, a, I'm, I'm. It's one of the YouTube rabbit holes I go down. It's boxing. Yeah. Do you ever watch Canelo? No. The like Canelo Alvarez. He's probably like the best boxer in the world right now. And he's. Uh, oh. Yeah. He's. He's active. He's Mexican. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's Mexican. But what? He has what red weight head. class? Uh, many. I I've mean, seen. I've seen him though. I've yeah, seen he's him. He's gone through like. Yeah. Fights. Did he fight Pacquiao? No. No. Uh, he's different like, era. Yeah. Well, no, he could have. I mean, it just... Pacquiao's out now? Yeah, pretty yeah. much, yeah. I think he's a politician now. But uh, This is great, man. I never get yeah, to talk about sports. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, the NAM Sports. NAM cast. Sports. <laughs> and I'm really, like, not a knowledge, but yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Okay. I'll, I'll check Alvarez, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, his, like... You know, he's kind of just... It seems like every fighter has, like, their thing. Five. Like, We're getting to five. five. All right. Okay. Let's make these last five scintillating, man. Yeah, Sizzling. To, somehow we have to actually. Have we talked go about deeper. Nam once? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how do you like this is amazing. <laughs> it's like Nam consciousness, yeah, Nam boxing, this is Nam, street. Nam. That's the best thing. Yeah, it's like going on there. This is amazing. There, I think this is actually being. I heard a show being broadcast out when I was in the bathroom, and I think people might be listening to this while like pooing. Ah, which, oh, is, which is a good time to bring up. Don't. Hey, if you're listening to this on the toilet, you know who you are, yeah? Take your time on the loo, yeah? Yeah, I had a... I had Take a your small, time. Okay, so yeah, talking about Nam, I had a small interaction with a guy who's telling somebody, like, check your Facebook likes later. You can do that outside of the stall. And I was like, don't rush a man when he's pooing. Like, God, let him be. Like, go use a different bathroom, man. It's important talk. And, hey, if you're in a bathroom, you know who you are. Calm it down. Yeah, he's still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if he's still waiting, okay, maybe. Maybe now it, he has. Yeah, it reminds me of that. Um, they should do that. Play that David Byrne song. <laughs> still waiting. <laughs> Just like, we need, like, little memes, meme audio for our life. But well, so, so now we have the Perfect Circuit podcast. Or the Perfect oh, yeah. Circuit stream, and then your podcast. Yes. We're going we're gonna to be friends. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I hope we can, yeah. I mean, I like this idea that we absolutely have no agenda for a conversation aside for a like, deep ramble. Yeah. I think that's the thing. It's like... <laughs> None of it was surface. Absolutely like, deep rambling. I think like after like 30 minutes, I was like, so do you have kids? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you live? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, yeah. fantastic. It's been an absolute pleasure. No, and I mean, uh, you know, sometimes these shows can um, be quite lonely, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I had a friend that I was hoping to come with, and he couldn't, couldn't be here, and I was like, oh, I'm going to be at NAM on my own? It's going to be like, ugh, yeah. I don't want to do that. Right, yeah. So uh, it, thanks for uh, being like a NAM companion. Yeah. 
Nam-sharon. I was going to say Nam Sharon, but yeah. Nam Panion's even better. Nam Panion. I was thinking that Nam Sandwich must be a thing. Yeah. Oh, at, uh, I had a Nam Sandwich. What? I actually had a Nam Chicken uh, Sandwich. Anaheim. Yeah, Whatever. and ham fresh. I got a nam sandwich. All right. So you know, there you go. Let's get all the puns out before we, we've got the last five minutes. We've got to get the puns in, man, I, before I think it's more before they cut us off. Yeah. Uh, because traditionally, by punning this much, the uh, the person with the cane comes on <laughs> and literally drags you off the stage. I hope so. so like this is this is the time where we get like physically dragged off. They would have to like get somebody. They'd be like, all right. I think some guy upstairs has a cane, and <laughs> I don't know how to reach him, so we're going to have to get three more guys over to do that. It, it would be a few It'd days. be like Tom Oberheim, who's over there. They'd yeah. whip Tom up and go, Tom, yeah. we've got some trouble in the streaming area. Can you come and sort them out? Yeah, Oberheim has like, a prime spot, don't they? They really do, and I'm happy about that. Yeah. When I first came in, I was like, I got a sort of a warm rush suddenly yeah. we're talking about nam in the last couple of minutes we and we're standing right next to oberheim who has a tremendous been, new scene it has been hard doing it here and like people have been like like waving in the background i've been like yes but but we've i've maintained yeah I've, especially that kid that was actually really heartwarming I, I he was just wanted to kid. run towards you into your arms by the looks or of things Could have been one. no it was definitely not me <laughs> he recognized you from the telly and he was like I think as you do more science-based stuff, you're yeah. going to get a lot more of that. Yeah. Because yeah. kids are just going to, you know, to yeah. I, you know, I, you're down to have kids? Uh, am I down? Like uh, Seems to be what you're implying. Oh, um, I'm open to the idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, you heard that. You heard that, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out. Ben. Dublin. Small. Dublin Pregnancy, small. open, open. Yeah. Kill, children, open, yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah, by no, all means. I, I, I do love kids, though. I, I love... Uh, <laughs> Maybe in Dublin you could have a child. That, a, a small child. <laughs> Hopefully it's a small child so it fits in its tiny, <laughs> tiny seat. No, um, no I, I do a lot of things that like would be excused if I had a kid with me. Like, you know, like... like yes. Play, like, I'll go to the off a hiking trail and be laying around in mud looking at frogs, you know, and it's like if I had a kid with me, people would be like, oh, what a great dad, but instead they're like, it's a pervert. What's he Son, doing? don't lick the frog. Yeah. <laughs> right. Especially not this one. Yeah. I'm going to lick it, yeah? Yeah. And then you're going to have to look after me. Yeah. Do you understand? I'm going to look a bit crazy. How long does it last, the frog thing? About 10 minutes. It's great. I'm going to be gone for about two years. In your time, ten minutes. But yeah, right, exactly. when I come back, I'm yeah. going to look really different, and I might not know who you are. Yeah. Are you cool with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fine, Dad. Yeah. Me you mean same as last week? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's a good life. Yeah. I, I suppose. Are Let's wrap good? it up, shall we? Yeah. I, I guess so. Yeah. I guess we're. Is fine. this where? Yeah. Excellent. Cool. I guess. Yeah. That's okay. Well, thanks, oh, thanks yeah, for watching. No. I will be doing a stream tomorrow at Thank you, Nam. the same time, Thank you, 3 ben. p.m. with Venus Siri. And then on Sunday, we'll be at Perfect Circuit. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. Else. All right. Yes, dismantling, dismantling topics.